everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of How Hollywood Works. I'm your host, Allegra Malul, and today we have Aubrey Huntsman, a social media <laughs> influencer and actress. So, I mean, I kind of just said what you did, but um, is That's there anything true. else you would use to describe yourself? Um, I'm... No, I think you kind of nailed it, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I guess actress, social media influencer, I guess. YouTuber... Fashionista. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, so growing up, did you know you wanted to be an entertainer? Yeah, I did. I did from a pretty young age. Um, like, my I don't know how I originally started. Like, I, I started with singing original. Like when I was super young, but I just remember my mom always telling me like. I guess she like discovered that I could sing. I guess, and she was always like, "Aubrey, oh, go, go sing," and then I would always sing the national anthem. That was just that was like, that shows off my voice the best. So I would just go and at, I would just sing it at like my brother's t-ball games and things like that. And that kind of like jump started everything. So like your first experience, I guess, would be singing the national anthem. Yeah. And I sang it at my talent show at my school, like not to like open up the talent show. Just that was my talent, <laughs> singing the national anthem. <laughs> That's cool. And um, what about like for acting and I guess social media? Like what started that? Um, Acting... I did, uh, like, my community theater when I was young, and then I just kind of did it throughout my life up until high school and after high school, and that's always been, like, my true love. Like, I love being on stage more than anything. I like it more than acting on film, um, and I like it more than making YouTube videos as well, even though I kind of get, like, a creative control with that a little bit more, which, which is why I started YouTube. I just love creating stuff, so it was just something fun. I had a camera already, so I was like, why not? I, I would watch some videos of people, you know, and like, I can do that, you know? I feel like that's what every YouTuber says. They're like, I saw someone and it inspired me, but I, I was like, I think I could do that. So I started out making tons of different types of videos, like makeup videos, fashion videos, because I didn't really know what I wanted, and I was like, maybe after I gain an audience, then I can make a singing video, and then I was like, what am I waiting for? And so then I started making singing videos as well. That's cool. Um, so how did you first start out as an actress, like professionally, like your first audition, all that? Um, I guess professionally, I, I've only really done community theater outside of writing my own stuff. Like I, I've always, I, I love being in community theater and I love the, the community, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the feeling and the family and but I guess professionally, I mean, I just kind of wanted to take the reins. And so Joe and I just wrote a show together. And I, I previously had produced his show, his one-man comedy show. And so that was kind of like my way into the professional field of like doing it for like for profit. But um, the first show that we did together, which was Choices, our Choose Your Own Adventure comedy show, which we just wrapped um, two weeks ago. That was like, my first really like professional production I did. And it was like so much fun. That's so cool. Um, so... I find that all actors or like I guess creative people in general come like face to face with people who are constantly like no you can't do it like it's impossible how do you combat that um it's interesting I've definitely had people um tell me things like that there's people in my family have been like are you sure you don't want to be like you're so you're so charismatic you want to like speak for a company like you could be like a I don't know a speaker at meetings and I was like uh, uh, I guess I just, I just kind of stuck to my guns. I mean, it's always been something that I've loved to do, and I just, it's that, it's that horrible thing that every parent doesn't want to hear, like, mom and dad, I'm moving to Hollywood, you know? <laughs> I feel like that's every parent's worst nightmare, but, um, I've had a pretty good support system, and my family overall as a whole, and as well as Joe's family, my boyfriend, like, his family has been super supportive as well, so I've had a decent amount of luck with people kind of, like, pushing me towards it, which is good. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, my whole family is accountants, so when I said I wanted to be an actress, <laughs> yeah. they were like, are you insane? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not going to happen, but, I mean, here we are, you guys. I have my own show. Yeah. <laughs> so. So you're doing it, so yeah. they can eat their words, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else completely. <laughs> um, so what advice would you give to younger generations who are trying to start out? Um, just do your thing. 
honestly. Just do your thing. I, th I think that morphing to what anyone else wants you to be, whether it be your parents or even people in the industry, which that's a common thread, uh, people always want you to, you know, play certain roles or, you know, if they, maybe they'll tell you that you, you'd be better behind the camera or things like that. Just do your thing, honestly. That's why I love writing my own shows, because then I don't have anybody telling me, like, assigning me a part or telling me who I can be or can't be I'm like well I wrote it and I'm gonna perform it and now I am so <laughs> take that you know so I, I think just like take the reins yourself if and if you want to become an actress and like you have a hard time getting in just make your own stuff that's how like YouTube kind of ties in with like acting for me is I, I, I think it's so awesome that we live in a day and age where you can just pick up a camera and make your own short film if you wanted to it's so accessible so if you want to get into acting and maybe your family's not so supportive of it just like if you have a camera if you have an iphone you can just make your own short film yeah i mean i heard there was actually a movie coming out that was completely shot on an iphone i think netflix produced it it was uh are you talking about tangerine it maybe was a movie i forgot that came the out name. it was an amazing film and it was totally shot on an iphone and it worked so well and it, that that's so afford it was iphone 5 too i mean at the time it might have been like <laughs> the best phone but yeah. that's i mean that's amazing uh, you can do anything it's it's so accessible yeah, it's, I mean, we live in a great time right now, I think. Um, we do. So, who are some of your role models growing up and even today? Ooh, that's a hard question. Um, I definitely, I loved, um, I loved old musicals a lot. I love classic, like, 1930s musicals, and I went to see a lot of theater, and I didn't know, although I didn't know a lot of their names, I would always wait outside the, the door, you know, and, like, I get to get, you know, Simba's autograph, and that was, like, <laughs> my, like, they were number one, like, coolest people to me. I, I just wanted to be up on stage. That's all I wanted to do, and when I saw, like, how sweet and nice they were afterwards, that was even more inspiring. Like, when you find out that someone you saw do something awesome can be like, hey, and want to take a picture with you and stuff, like, that was just the coolest thing in the world. So I definitely look up to stage performers a lot. I find that they have such a great attitude and such a welcoming environment. Um, and it just, it makes me want to be part of that family and be part of that community. And does that carry on today? Like, do you still look up to those people or is there anyone else? Yeah, definitely. And I also look up to my boyfriend, Joe. I know that sounds so cheesy, but No, it's he, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he was on Vine, and he makes comedy videos, and he does characters, and he just, like, blows me away every day with how talented he is, and he's so supportive, and he pushes me to, you know, like, keep writing that script, keep writing your songs and your videos, and keep doing it, and he's definitely, like, my biggest inspiration. You two collaborate a lot together as well, I've noticed. Yes. Um, you guys have the Regal Show, uh, so can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I've had, um, so Joe had his own channel um, for a while. He was on Vine originally, if you guys remember Vine. Uh, <laughs> recipes. Um, and he does character videos, so he completely embodies, he's so amazing. I'm like talking him up so much, is that like, I feel like that's like <laughs> I'm talking about myself because he's a part of me, so I'm like, yeah, check it out, it's awesome. Um, but he embodies these characters and he's just like super talented and awesome. And um he had his channel, and I would sometimes be on, like, a vine here and there, you know? And then after he started on YouTube and was making his characters on YouTube, I was like, I'm going to start my own channel. And I was kind of contemplating if I wanted to do acting, but it, it just... I'm not much of a character performer as much as he is, so... I was like, oh, I could, I could just try to do it, like, beauty stuff, you know? And then I had him on my channel a couple times, and we did, like, coupley things together, you know? Like challenges and like the newlywed game like fun stuff like that and people just like really really responded to that they loved our chemistry together and they loved how much we had fun together because we really have so much fun together and so we were like let's start a channel together you know let's go to Disneyland and film it and do funny things and like mess with each other and like do goofy stuff I don't know and just people really responded to it so we have a lot of fun with that channel yeah a lot of um I guess influencer couples are gaining a lot of popularity nowadays mm -hmm. um probably because like couple goals you know everyone's like <laughs> looking up to it yeah <laughs> we do get that as a comment a lot which is funny but um yeah definitely that's i i i see a lot like people respond to us separately but they love it even more when we're together like 
I don't know what it is. And I'm like, don't you like my stuff? And they're like, where's Joe? And I'm like, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, so let's like switch gears a little bit. Uh, there's a huge negative stigma around YouTubers becoming actors because of like, no offense, but like movies like that Cameron Dallas has been in or Nash Greer, like they were not that great. <laughs> um, a lot of popularity because obviously their fan base supported yeah. it, but uh, acting technically wise, they're just not, well done, I guess. Um, so do you feel that this could be harming your career as an actress? Um, honestly, I feel like I've never really seen myself as an influencer first. I guess I, maybe it's because I don't have like the giant numbers like Nash Career or any of them have. I, um, I feel like companies choosing influencers for their numbers will go away. I think that it, it was it was a short lived thing and it's very ingrained into our generation because those are the people that have the most pull. And I think it was kind of a cash grab. I mean, I didn't see any of the films, so I can't. I don't know how they were, but I've heard stuff. But um, I think that these companies, you know, making an easy easy buck and getting these kids that I don't know if they've ever had experience acting before or anything of the like, but just throwing them in, you know, into this into the film industry. And the product isn't as good as it could be, but it made a ton of money. I mean, that's always going to be a thing. I mean, companies trying to, you know, finding new ways instead of making something that's like a, an amazing piece of art and just like funneling in ways to make money. Like, because, you know, young kids love these boys. They just like look up to them more than anything. So they'll buy anything regardless of if the movie is like Oscar worthy or not. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, but... I think that it's gonna go away. I, I feel like the the direction of the movie industry, we're at like a, a crossroads right now, like with YouTube coming in and like the cable TV kind of like, they're kind of starting to blend and they're kind of fighting against each other right now. But I feel like at some point it's gonna be worked out and I don't think that it's gonna matter if you're an influencer or not and hopefully talent will prevail. And I mean, I haven't had anybody like look down upon me. If anything, it's helped me especially with live shows because I have a lot of my fans that will like support no matter what and they do come mm -hmm. but the, I, I feel like as a as a whole it's losing that stigma a little bit because everything's kind of like blending together it's not so separate I'm sorry if I'm talking like way too much oh no dude you're good keep going <laughs> um like the influencers aren't so separate from like traditional media it's kind of like starting to cross over and blend and I don't think that there's really that bad of a stigma anymore at least I hope not I mean I think if you have the talent then it shouldn't really matter but you never know this industry is very reputation based so um yes that's very true so speaking of do you think YouTube is going to replace cable television or even like huge streaming websites like Netflix I don't interestingly enough which I don't know if that goes against because I <laughs> am on YouTube but um I think that it's going to be a mix. I, I mean, the decline, YouTube, I feel, is starting to decline a little bit. I think how long kids can watch someone just in their bedroom, I feel like it'll it'll go away. I feel like as as this generation grows older, they're not going to be wanting to s sit and watch the same thing all the time on YouTube. And also, I feel like cable TV is also kind of going down a little bit, too, and they're starting to blend, like how I was saying before. I think that... YouTube is going to have a rise in quality of the content. Like, people are going to be starting to make more shows and movies on, on YouTube, but I don't think that... Mm, I feel like there's going to be a platform that combines it. I feel like one day there's going to be a platform that's user-based, where, where people can make their own films and put it on, but it's also quality-controlled. Yeah. So it, it's not mixed in with the prank videos and things like that, you know? I've, but because right now Netflix is the top dog, but it's not as accessible by just users. You know, you can't yeah. just make something and post on Netflix. But I feel like there's going to be that platform that's in between, that's curated, and it has only like movie or show quality stuff, like with sound and editing and camera quality. But it will also be made by people like you and I. I'll just you know, that's what I think. At least <laughs> that's just my prediction. I don't know. Um, I noticed. I think YouTube did something called like YouTube TV where they started like linking up with cable companies to put their shows on YouTube as well. So that's why I was asking, because I think it's just, I don't know, I think it's crazy how 
big of a monopoly YouTube might become in the future, because YouTube also does YouTube Red, where they produce their own shows. Right. Which are questionable, but I don't know. <laughs> um, and then with the addition of cable companies joining onto YouTube and then people creating their own content, I don't know, I feel like it could go somewhere that it's never gone before. At the same time, though, creators are less inclined to create on YouTube anymore because of the ad apocalypse and... Yes, definitely. Has that affected you? Yeah, it has. Um, there was a time when Joe and I could make enough money on YouTube, but that time is not now. <laughs> but it's good because it's pushed us to try to do other things, and it actually ended up pushing us towards doing what we wanted to do even more, which is live performances, because that's how we're making our money now, and we're also producing other people's comedy shows and, and live stuff. We want to get kids into the theater more um, instead of... Which it, which is a good thing because these creators are having this struggle right now with the ad apocalypse and not making as much money as they used to, which I hope that'll turn into a new direction where maybe some of the content that's questionable, like you were saying, won't be made and they'll find new new ventures and new avenues. Cool. Um, so do you believe that social media influencers are part of the new generation of Hollywood? That's an interesting question, because most of them do live in Hollywood, and they're they're definitely in the public eye a lot, and they're looked up to like movie stars used to be. So I would say yeah, I would say they are. Um, it's definitely a whole different ball game. I don't know how much it's. Hmm, I guess because Hollywood is kind of changing its meaning a little bit. It is you know because there's not as many films made traditionally nowadays that aren't for like digital. Uh, platforms and stuff and a lot of these digital platforms do include social media influencers in their shows you know like a lot of youtubers get their own shows on youtube red or like there's i know there's an at&t program that has a bunch of influencer shows on it so yeah i guess i would say they are the new hollywood how does that like make you feel like what's your opinion on that hmm. um it's like a love it and hate it thing i i love it because i've gotten opportunities that i wouldn't normally have like posting videos and like getting recognition for like my singing or even just my personality which I don't like as much for the personality thing because I think that any old Joe can get on there and, and there's people that are way better than me at talking in front of a camera that's for sure in their bedroom um but I mean I love it because it's giving me opportunities but I, I do hate the stigma because, I mean, you even knew coming, you were like, there's definitely a stigma around the, the films that they've made and the YouTube Red series and stuff, which that, that kind of comes with the game, though. I mean, when it's an open source like that and you have the opportunity to just e explode and be super creative and get an audience that you wouldn't normally have, there's definitely going to be people in the same field as you that you might not agree with or don't have the same reputation as you, but it's kind of the fun of it, I guess. Do you think any of these like social media influencers could become a household name like Marilyn Monroe? I think they already have. Really? I mean, I don't know anybody under the age of 25 that doesn't know Logan Paul oh. or, you know, they're a household name. They definitely are. Do they have the same um, legacy? And I'm not speaking about Logan specifically, but I, I, do they have the same legacy as Marilyn Monroe has? Um, the longevity of the of the legacy i don't know because that's the thing that changes the time are these youtube videos going to be end up being relics of this time and be like timeless classics or will they be forgotten because it's just two people in a room just messing around or filming the street you know it depends i don't know maybe maybe these maybe kids that watch youtube will end up looking back on these youtube videos and see them as like pinnacles of their childhood in that way then i guess they would be kind of like their marilyn monroe or you know um, I don't know. Time will tell, I guess. That's crazy. Um, it's just crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so aside from like acting and YouTube, you also have your own clothing line, right? Yeah. Uh, so can you tell us what inspired <laughs> you to start that? Yeah, I almost wore one today. And then I was like, ah, is that too like self promote you know? Oh, no. <laughs> Honestly, promo yourself as much as you want. <laughs> That's so funny. I didn't think you would ask about this, actually. Yeah, it's called Drama Kid. And because I'm a drama kid, clearly, uh, and I, I guess because I'm just, I, I, just, I was just kind of inspired by, I mean, simple shirts with like writing and like is kind of cool and hip right now. So I was like, you know what? 
I'm going to make something that's for kids like me. So I made shirts that say, you know, drama kid or dramatic or trying to be a star and like things like that. Because I know that a lot of kids feel like that. Um, and they want to express themselves in that way. And I feel like the drama community is super tight knit and they love, drama kids love talking about how much they love drama and how much they love theater and everything about that. So I was like, I would want this if I was still, I mean, I am, I'm still a theater, I'm a theater kid forever. But if I was, you know, in a drama class or something, I would just like love to have that. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to make that. That's and, really cool. Um, it, it got a good response from my audience. They loved it because I know that I'm followed by a lot of drama kids. So, yeah, drama <laughs> kid. <laughs> um, so is it difficult to, like, manage, like, your acting and your YouTube and your clothing line and singing and, like, everything you do? Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to um, focus a little bit more on stage production than I am everything else. But I think it's really cool that that's something that, because of social media, I'm able to try so many things that I love. Like, I'm able to try clothing design, I'm able to try singing and makeup videos and fashion videos and, like, all this stuff. And it was stuff that I never would have been able to try otherwise, you know? I mean, any girl, I mean, I could still do my makeup in my bedroom, but being able to interact with my audience and and have them like get their feedback and get their response to all these different ventures that I've tried has just been so awesome. And I don't think I'm ever gonna stop trying new things, but I'm definitely focusing a little bit more on the stage performances. But it, it's, it's been hard to grapple it all, but I'm more thankful than anything that I'm able to try all those things. That's cool. All right, so is there anything else that you wanna say to our audience at home? Um. I think that YouTube and I think you should watch a little bit of everything. I think that if people who just watch YouTube, maybe you should try watching some some TV shows or some live shows getting out of the house. And I think if you just watch cable or if you're a traditionalist, I think you should try watching some YouTube videos. I think you can find stuff that you like on all platforms and the internet can give you beautiful stuff that you never knew was around, like shows that totally speak to you, that's made by somebody on the internet, you know, web series and cartoons and all this stuff. I think that there is content everywhere and there's content for you specifically. And if you've never ventured into viewing something you never thought you would, I think you should try because there's cool stuff out there. All right, cool. So um, <laughs> thank you so much for being thank on you the for show. Having me. Thank you so much. The official do the handshake. <laughs> um, thank you guys for watching. I was your host, Allegra Malul, and that's how Hollywood works. <laughs>